Okay, hello, uh, my name is Yolanta. Uh, today I'm presenting the topic on most overlooked Gen AI use cases. Um, so a little bit uh, about me before we jump into the topic. So I am um, a founder currently of at Marlin, but 15 years ago I joined computer generated studies, uh, which led me to luckily be uh, hired by the marketing store worldwide um, for various use cases, uh, VR, AR, as well as product design. And then my startup career began after some time. Um, I was previously a, a co-founder in a Dutch startup for waste tech and currently, like I mentioned, going through uh, Marlum, uh, where we uh, help businesses scale their customer acquisition. Uh, so the, the topic that we're covering will have uh, a few slides on um, the science of low value use cases, as well as the science of high value use cases and how to find high value generative AI use cases. And these findings are based on talking with hundreds of experts um, in the last six months alone, um, trying to figure out and dig, dig, dig deeper into these new technologies. Um, as well as exp expand what we how we understand uh, existing AI and with new with new AI tools. So, uh, like I said, hundreds of expert inter interview experts in experts interviewed. So, uh, the the high level summary will be shared in this um, in these slides. So, um, but to begin with, we want to declare boldly and and challenge our current assumptions by saying that most generative AI use cases are low value still. And, you know, just as a few examples, you can think about cold outreach email generation, you know, which is not great. Like no one likes, no one likes spam. And, and Google is also cracking down on, on spam generating domains, blacklisting them. Um, then we see a lot of chatbot ideas, but but do people prefer that? Do people still prefer to speak person to person? So that's not, you know, questionably not a great use case, let's say, in most cases. And we see a lot of summarization, some, uh, you know, of insights and so on. But do they actually summarize um, those insights or, you know, do they produce good quality insights? And, and basically, are we missing out on comprehending topics ourselves? So... Um, so those most common use cases that people identify and, you know, they're easy to copy, um, you know, they're, they are overhyped wrappers, uh, often, and they offer no modes as well. And oftentimes open AI or AWS can, can do it better than, than we can. So for example, um, open AI announced, uh, GP, custom GPTs, which will enable, training large language models on a specific domain. Um, and basically they they know how to create custom uh, customization of language models without lobotomizing the weights, which is the side effect of um, other people, other other um, you know engineers doing it. Uh, so oftentimes the, those weights get affected in a negative way and uh, AI models don't work that well anymore. So, you know, just an, as an example of the low low value signals or low value use case signals, and ultimately uh, one more signal is low traction. So users are not rushing to use it or not lining up to buy purchase it. So, <clears throat> on the flip side, if we look at high value uh, use cases that are still overlooked. Um, the the signals we see there is our clients line up to use it uh, they offer real impact long term impact um they they are harder to copy and they attract they attract funding so um going into how to uncover high value use cases um we notice that there's between one or two techniques missing uh, we in the experts and product uh designers we talk to so they're good at using one but kind of omit the other um technique so going into how to uncover those high value use cases uh we'd like to start with you know first you have to seek to understand the technical 
to tech deeper. Um, we are good at identifying chatbots as the use case because we understand generative AI is really good at predicting the next token. Um, and that use case becomes obvious, but we don't understand other how other concepts around machine learning, you know, for example, embeddings um, and nearest neighbor concepts. Well, what that what does that mean, and how the analysis and classification, uh, which is extremely powerful, um, you you know, concept, and what kind of use cases that that could inspire. So, the the first. Um, tip on technique is to always look to understand the technology better, uh, deeper, and understand those key concepts of machine learning. And new use cases will become apparent. Uh, a great source to, to do so uh, is course.fast.ai, uh, which is very practical, pragmatic. Um, you can watch those uh, lessons and understand how different types of models work. And the, the the AI field will be a little bit less mysterious. So <clears throat> an additional benefit of seeking to understand the technology deeper is potential white space benefit, um, less competition. So if we go into second technique is uh, making sure you're, you're solving super pains and not nice to haves. Uh, and by that, I mean, you have to be evidence-based not assumption driven when it comes to understanding what is the use case. So, and this this goes back to deeper understanding of your customers, carrying out research, interviewing research, mapping their existing journey uh, in a particular field, and identifying lukewarm pains versus super pains, um, and solving picking one or two to solve. Um, I, this usually un makes uncovers additional use cases you didn't see because a lot of a lot of um ideas are based on our assumptions and frankly this is low entry bar everyone has assumptions everyone has low hanging fruit ideas and we're good at generating ideas and assumption driven ideas like that's not going to uncover anything special uh so you you have to go evidence based you have to discover super pains and make sure you're solving for that. Uh, and frankly, from our experience, it's always something completely surprising, completely a blind spot you didn't see before. So go evidence-based. That will guarantee high traction with customers because customers usually buy solutions to super pains, not for nice-to-haves. Um, and for this, we recommend human-centric design um, methods, uh, which are listed in the resource link below. So just take a screenshot of this video and make sure you apply human-centric design principles. Uh, moving on to third technique, which is overlooked by some, some uh, you know, experts we've spoken to, um, is researching new policy, uh, especially for this AI, new emerging technology. Uh, there's you know, first time AI regulations coming out for UK and in EU, um, you know, we're talking about pro-innovation AI regulation and first time EU AI Act, where they then, you know, define the key principles for emerging technology and products and the new legislation that's coming into play, uh, you know, very shortly, very soon. Um, and, and, you know, I know that even if it sounds a little bit boring to, to recommend to do so, it really informs the long-term trend. Uh, in some cases, we notice people saying the opposite of what the legislation is going to be. So, for example, legislation is saying human in, in the loop, uh, creating systems that are have humans overlooking the AI and AI governance for safety, for um, accountability, and so on, So and, and not... So that's going to be one of the core principles. But what we sometimes hear in the industry is that, oh, we're overbuilding the system to automate the human away uh, completely. So make make the humans bypassable completely. And to me, that sounds like they're going to see some trouble soon because the legislation is going to come out and high risk use cases will 
be cracked down on in some cases. So, so read those documents. They're a little bit dry, but sometimes also give spell out the ideas as well. So uncover uncover long term trend use cases, and obviously you the, they're more attractive to funding. So serious investors and serious. Um, uh, organizations like governmental organizations will will look to sponsor and fund those use cases. So that's your source of ideas and use cases. So moving on to last technique is uh, leveraging your domain expertise specifically for generative AI, uh, because as a lot of people are, are realizing now, there's a very low entry bar to utilize this technology. There's not a lot of modes in, in it either because it, you don't have to have an excessive amount of proprietary data or anything, any other hurdle that used to be a problem to, 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 to generate, to create something bespoke and um, like proprietary AI. So leveraging your domain expertise is more important because it provides that competitive edge and in, in networks effects uh, well-established the networks effects you you also will utilize a niche insight that took you perhaps 10 years to 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 gain and everyone else in that space are basically catching up uh, you know to to learn what you already know um and they're also harder to copy because of of those niche niche understanding and knowledge that you hold. So here we, we would say, if you are, are inspired to innovate because the technology is innovative, innovative and you want to make it meaningful, let's say change completely into green tech or sustainable tech, but you have no domain expertise, we would say, don't do it, you know, because you're catching up with PhD graduates or other entrepreneurs who have extensive experience in, in those fields and they will be able to move faster and build better use case um, products. So um, a good resource to read on, upon that is uh, by this essay by um, established venture capital investor in, in deep tech, uh, the new new modes. So they, they will explain how how the, the your domain expertise and leveraging it in this field might make most sense uh, for going faster to market. Um, yeah, so so that's the fourth technique. And the fifth technique is a bit of a cheat code, but we say it's combined. You need to combine the, the, the previous four um, because it doesn't make sense if you are reading all the policies and you have extensive domain expertise and you understand the te technology, but you're solving a nice to have, not a super pain or vice versa if you're, um, you know, not, not combining those um, four techniques to to really maximize your potential to be the top top one percent of one percent of one percent and we say the niche you go the quicker you grow it's it's in the overlap uh where the best use cases live um and you do have to sit uncomfortably in in the research phase a little bit researching the the users the customers the technology policy and then uh, eventually, after you went kind of w uh, wide and deep, uh, you'll be able to come back with that, you know, deep insight and basing, base your development effort on some solid grounding. Okay, we'll just see. So the overlap. And just to complete that with an illustration of a use case. So um, we at Marlam are applying the same techniques uh, um, for the to solve future of scalable acquisition for B2Bs. Uh, we want to bring more qualified leads that convert better. Uh, we're leveraging an, our domain expertise in the field of uh, 15 years. And we've solved numerous uh, marketing automations in the past uh, using AI uh, for inbound and outbound lead generation. Uh, AI is not new to us. Uh, for, for last seven or six years, we were aware of it and using it in various different products. Um, and we're working on aligning to with new policy to keep design systems that have a human overlooking uh, to make sure that the, the these tools are also safe. So if you are 
have any questions about anything that was shared um, in this presentation, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, also, if you're interested in scaling your uh, customer acquisition uh, in B2B space, then please reach out to us as well. Um, it was a great pleasure to present and I look forward to talking to you.